lot of thinking and I wanted to remind everybody and I I mean on the whole council it's unfortunate everybody's not here but um the first thing I want to say is we're all only very small um and what I mean by that is we were voted in by less than 200 students on the campus and there's you know I, I think it's more close closer to nine or 150 people voted out of 19,000 plus students but if, if you rounded it up to 200 students voted and there were 20,000 or uh, 200 students out of 20,000 that's only one percent of the people that on the whole campus voted and I think it's really important that we realize that how important that is to us and why that matters because we in no way as a voting body represent everybody on this campus because so many people didn't vote and it would be really easy for us to have the idea that we were maybe more important than we are but because so few people voted we really truly it's impossible for us to represent anybody on everybody on this campus so it's it's really imperative for us especially in our language and our documents what we stand for that we stand for everybody on this campus and and specifically i mean we have people in the you know we have a criminal department of criminal ju criminal justice um, people are going to be police officers, uh, paramedics, doctors. We have an ROTC that produces military officers, uh, place produce pilots, a lot of people who are going to serve our country. And I think we have to really be cautious of the language we use in our documents. For instance, like one of the reasons I got so upset last week is I was doing my homework and Teams box kept popping up and it just kept saying, you know, it kept y'all were talking about putting the word injustice using calling it the injustice system and i got so offended by that and part of the reason is because i'm a veteran i know that there's other veterans and people that want to be a part of the system that don't think that way and these documents we really have to make an effort to especially in the language that we use uh include all twenty thousand people if we can and i know we can't th think for everybody but the the least we can do the least we owe this university is to represent everybody, everybody, not just small groups of people or groups of people's politics and things like that. We really should try to be more neutral uh, so that everybody can participate. And um, I think we're kind of headed in the wrong direction in that way. And I think we're better than that. I know I am better than that and I, I don't like to lose my temper and I'm sorry that I did that, but I'm not I'm not taking back anything I said because I really do believe that, you know, in order to represent everybody, we have to do that in our documents and language. And um, I know Dan and I and everybody has spoken about this and we have a chance here, especially in writing our constitution and other things to do something that lasts the students at MSU, all the students for a long time, for a hundred years, if we do it right. But if it's just um, kind of a bunch of politics and things like that, it's always gonna be contentious it's only going to drive people further away and, and we have so few people voting right now i think it's really important that we really strive to include everybody in this campus and not forget about that um another thing i want to bring up and then i'll finish is that i we were all voted in by a very small majority and uh of the students that voted and um i don't see the necessity of having a second voting body underneath the voting body, any coalition that exists underneath the um, voting body that we have right now, it seems to undermine everything that we stand for uh, with us being voted in because we have 12 members and all 12 members deserve a vote. And I don't think it's fair when a coalition of people can walk into this room and control um, the vote, you know, before they walk in and every single vote has to go through the coalition and is voted in and that coalition has separate officers that aren't elected by the students as a part of that. We're all just here and, and it'd be different if that coalition was opened up to everybody on campus. It really isn't and it, it's it's undermining effectively what we're doing here. It waters down our votes and um, I just want us all to be conscious of that because I think we're all bigger than that and we really have to make that conscious effort to think for everyone and not just ourselves. So um, with that all, you know, I hope you all consider that. And maybe, you know, the, the, the idea that I had with a bunch of people talking in the office to avoid public, you know, disputes in this body um, was that we could informally handle things. I, I never pictured that to be something where you'd make a formal body, make a second time where it's, it's hard for a lot of us, especially when school starts to even make this meeting. And then um, 
to make that meeting, it, it'll be difficult. So um, it's it's just there's no need to duplicate the voting body that's already been voted in. So I would hope that you all have the maturity to perhaps uh, disband the coalition that has officers and takes votes and comes in here and controls the elections. Uh, I'm not demanding anything. I'm just thinking that we're all more mature than that and we can informally discuss things and come in here and vote at them just the same and get a lot of good things done. So I hope that uh, you all just hear me and think about it before you react too strongly to what I'm saying. And uh, you know, I only wish the best for all the students on this campus. And again, that's we're a very, very small percentage and we were voted in by a very, very small percentage, less than 1% of the campus. So let's do our best to try to represent everybody if possible. That's all I have to say. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Alan. Okay, on to our agenda. So let's go through the, the let's go through the uh, reports of boards and committees as per the agenda. Uh, Paul, Governing Documents Committee. Thank you, Dan. So the Governing Documents Committee doesn't have a whole lot of new stuff to report, but we have agreed on a time to meet um, in person and or online. This will be a hybrid meeting and we'll be meeting on a Thursday. I'm thinking three o'clock. Um, we put a poll into the Governing Documents Committee chat. Um, everybody who's on that committee is in that chat um, and has had the ability to vote on when we would be meeting. The plurality suggests Thursday. And so mark your calendar for next Thursday. We'll be meeting around three o'clock. Um, if that's a not a good time for other people, please say something in our chat. Maybe we can work for an earlier time or something or a later time. Happy to adjust that. Um, but we're going to be actually getting together in a meeting to discuss the changes that have been proposed um, and potential changes that people have on their mind. And again, we welcome anyone interested to partake in these conversations um, so that they may have their voice heard in our committee. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, say cab. Mike, then Stephanie, or Stephanie, then Mike. Um, I got nothing. Stephanie? Yeah, um, I don't know. You can honestly just take us off <laughs> until um, the fall semester starts because there really isn't anything going on. We're, again, we're just waiting for CCD and CU Denver to have their reps. So, yeah, we're going to be doing nothing until then for now. Oh. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for that. I'll probably keep you on just so you can tell us nothing until then. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Um, Gabe, I don't think you're on here. And likewise, I don't think there's anything there. So um, we'll we'll skip on that. How about is Alex, Chad, Paul? How Paul? A social uh, social media committee. The social media committee is currently going through the process of purchasing a Canva Pro subscription. Description. We, since we did vote to approve said purchase, we're just working with Armando. Um, it's my understanding that they're acquiring a purchasing card for TSAC uh, for this year so that we can use it to make those kind of purchases and empower our budget committee as well. Um, uh, outside of that, we haven't done a whole lot, um, so nothing new outside of that to report. Um, again, we're continuing to try and work with Senna to uh, get into the WordPress so that we can update our websites. Uh, we We've been talking, and that's really something we want to put push to the to the front of our focus right now uh, because we really haven't been updating the website, and um, it got the last council and some hot water with Met Media and stuff. So we definitely want to get on that. Um, yeah, um, really, it's just meeting with Senna on that. I'm waiting on a response, but probably just going to meet her in her office and and, and go over it. But um, that's everything we have for the social media committee. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. And yeah, and to, to piggyback off that, that would be a good time and place to get the recordings of this meeting on to the website and archives so that the public at any point can see our meetings and see the work that we're doing. Um, so yeah, let's make that a priority to get to get Senna on um, on board to get that on the website, because currently I own the meeting recordings and without the the the, the proper sharing of that link, then it's pretty much private. So once we can get that on the website, that'll be that'll be good. So I appreciate that, Paul, and the social media committee. CSGC representative updates. That would be I'll take the lead on this one. Um, so nothing new there. Um, there's still the coalition for the student government. Uh, there's things 17 universities across the state, and we still haven't started our official year. That starts in August. Um, 
the meeting that we had with their MSU Denver was re was canceled by the chair and has yet to be rescheduled. So as updates come now, now a couple of the reps are out of town. So like Naomi's out of town currently. So as soon as we have an update, we will bring it to the council. Re, go ahead with the policy advisory committee. The policy advisory committee yet met online yesterday and discussed an implement weather policy that President Davidson has asked for the team to review. Um, and so they are going over this, they're, they're workshopping it and will continue to do this in another two weeks. And um, as I suggested, they look at CU boulders because they have a policy in place and it has scenarios of what possibilities would be for students, for asynchronous, for synchronous um, classes, for staff, um, it kind of covers all bases, so I will have an update when that's finalized and be able to tell you about it. Thank you so much, Ree, for all your work. Um, we're going to do the TSAC budget committee. Um, Mike, go ahead. Hey, thanks, Dan. So um, <clears throat> the BRC meeting, um, budget Recom recommendation committee for MSU met today. Um, there is a lot to unpack there, but um, to get the bad news out of the way first, um, enrollment is down about 10%. Um, adding to the total about 25% at the beginning of COVID. So as a significant dash, the university's budget. Um, and um, I've lost my thoughts. Um, but um, so there's a big vote coming up this uh, Monday that um, Dan and I are going to participate in. Um, they are voting to raise salaries for faculty, um, faculty, uh, administration, um, teachers, um, professors, all that stuff. And um, I believe they're coming to the real realization that they're going to have to cut a bunch of programs, programs that don't um, give them a good value or return on investment, essentially. So um, I'll let Dan, we're going to kind of, there's a lot in that meeting, so I'll pass off Dan real quick. Yeah, thanks, Mike. So essentially, as of now, right, an accountant in the upper corporate entity of the school is looking at return and investment. So how much money are they going to make off of us, essentially, as, as our learning is their commodity? Um, so they're, they're, they're having to make a decision as to what to cut, what to give a raise. And, and at, this, at the end of the day, what's happening is not everybody can agree on cutting certain things to get raises. So there's still because the committee that we're talking about is just a recommendation committee. So this is a recommendation that will be sent to the board of trustees and to the president for them to make the final decision. So at this point, half the committee doesn't really want to raise. A, you know, raise it a flat 3% for, you know, professors and some administrators. Other people want to raise it on a sliding scale. So all of this is um, kind of ongoing. And when it comes to the specific programs, no, but they have a couple of things that work. So they are under the pathways to possible is something they can, they believe is, um, Stephanie, to answer your question, is a program that is worth their investment. And then another thing I think is what James is participating in is like the earn to learn, excuse me, the earn to learn um, internships. That's another program that um, is very important to them and they can see a fiscal number growth and, and it's like a return investment. Um, something that bothers me a little bit is, is, is a lot of these ROIs may not be monetary, right? Uh, when it comes to professional development and things that are going to affect our lives many years down the road, may not be a tangible dollar sign on a computer or on a spreadsheet right now, but is highly, highly effective and beneficial for students' lives going forward. So, um, at that point, uh, yeah, so basically overall, it's still it's the, the budget's going to be recommended on Monday and we are still waiting to see some data to, to be able to make the, the right. Um, the right vote for our for, for from TSAC to be on that recommendation. So unless you have anything to add, Mike, I'll take Ree, Ree's question. I just wanted to suggest I, I'm sure this committee has this handled and I'm an outsider. I'm not involved in it at all, but it stands to reason that they might suggest some KPIs for some of these programs where it's not directly monetary related and you know for ex you know it, like for instance James you know is doing this work in Washington and what do we want the outcomes to be that would show that this is a a viable program for MSU to consider so some of them don't show any kind of monetary returns but there's other things that can be realized that are important to, to raise the profile of the university and what we're able to do. So I'm sure you they know this, sure. but in my experience, that's always a great thing to add. Thank, thank you, Ree. Yeah, yeah, th those those are things that we've suggested. But at the end of the day, it's, we're talking a high up um, trustees that are just looking at, you know, spreadsheets and how they can keep the budget going and the school running. Because after all, 
it is a business. All right. So, um, want to say something, Mike? One last thing, Mike. Go ahead. Um, so, <clears throat> just um, getting a feel of all the stuff. Um, I have a reasonable th um, thought that's going to happen. Is, um, most likely, um, when they make all the budget cuts and stuff like that, we are going to probably get our budget cut for T Sec at least. At least I have a feeling that they would, because um, when they're looking at return on investment and stuff. Um, it, it, there's a lot of layers involved in that, but um, I would just put it out there. So um, expect a cut to prior our budget than what I've currently calculated. Thank you for that. And I do see that um, Armando head out. So thank you, Armando, for that, uh, for at least being present. I know it's the summer and we're over. We're, we're, we're doing too much sometimes because normally student government doesn't start till August. I appreciate for all you do. Um, faculty Student Affairs Committee was... Naomi's not here. Re, do you have any update on that or is it just it's not going on? Much the same as Stephanie's. We won't meet until fall. Okay. And then the last committee roundtable update would be the COVID response committee. Uh, Paul, do you want to go ahead and take that? Yeah. So we haven't met again since our last meeting we had. Um, but just to reiterate a few of the highlights um, is that there is a spike in BA four and five. Um, and we're still, uh, we still haven't seen the peak on that particular spread here in Denver. And so they're advising that all students, faculty, staff, and affiliated with the university when traveling, wear a mask, when returning, wear a mask for a period of time. Um, they suggest testing once you've returned um, from traveling somewhere. Uh, and so these are all good measures that uh, we should endorse. Um, we are at a high risk level. That is still the case. Um, one of the things that Dr. Uh, Ruben Zerilla let us know is that after July 15th, which is today, um, insurance will be charging what he called customers for the new tests. And so people will start having to pay depending on their insurance starting today. It would be around $20 for folks who have a copay or have the uni uh, university's insurance, the ship insurance, um, or $100 for self pay if you're outside of insurance. And so that's those are the highlights of the COVID committee. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Paul. And it looks like Armando took off. Um, so on to new business. So currently, um, top of the new business, nominate TSAC reps or rep for MSU Denver Student Travel Program Committee. So currently I'm sitting on that. Um, basically, it's just students that and organizations that request money for travel for conferences and stuff. And there is a seat on that committee that TSAC um, has a space in. So basically, any council members willing to represent the student body on that and then um, realize that committee is flexible. It's not something that we actually have to be there and sitting for the actual presentation, but the recording will be ha recorded and then we score based on a rubric or whatever that the committee has to be able to basically judge the presentation and how useful it will be for that student's professional development or whatever. And so then we would get back with our scores after watching the recording and submit it to Dave Barossa and CMEI because that's who's who the committee is, is through. So um, I guess we'll open it up to the floor, but any suggestions of anybody want to nominate themselves or nominate somebody else or any questions on that? Um, go ahead, Mike, and then Ree. Um, I'll nominate Paul for that committee. I would accept that nomination. Re, <laughs> I'd like to nominate myself as the only okay. grad student. <laughs> Perfect. So, um, anybody opposed to Paul or Re? Hearing none. Okay. So, uh, Stephanie, let's see what Stephanie wrote. Pretty low maintenance. Yeah, it is pretty low maintenance. Since what was, although today there was three presentations. So, um, yeah. All right. So then I will get you two looped in to that committee. I'll just um, email Dave. Go ahead, Mike. Um, will this committee be added to the roundtable? Sure. Yeah, I could be headed to the roundtable. Basically, it's just going to be the it's probably going to pick up more during the fall because as students request, you know, to go have speaking engagements or or different things they want to present or go to for different um, conferences around the country, for instance, like a cybersecurity conference or mm -hmm political science conference or so so on and so forth. And you know, basically if the students are gonna need a thousand or twelve hundred dollars, they need to present why it's gonna be beneficial, why the student fees should go to that. So I will get you guys looped in to that and Fifi, Dave Bros and you to get you locked in. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Thank you for being willing to do that. Okay, so on to the next um, meeting or meeting agenda business item is convocation. So convocation is on 818. That's August 18th from 5 to 7. Check-in is at 4.30 p.m. I have signed up TSAC for a spot. I haven't heard any more details on that, but I definitely think we should be there. Um, so I don't know any more details than that. I haven't heard anything. Um, I guess this is on here to see if any TSAC members is willing, or excuse me, are willing to table that or be there, um, be there for that on the 18th um, from 4.30 to 7. Stephanie says we should definitely show up, and I agree with that, Stephanie. Alan, go ahead. I'll, I'll table that for okay. sure. Okay, so that's uh, mark your calendar then, Alan, on uh, the 18th, starting at 4.30. It's going to be wherever the convocation is, maybe here around the t uh, Tivoli. Uh, uh, Stephanie says I will be tabling for Sigma. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, please stop by. We'd love to see your face, Stephanie. Go ahead, uh, Mike. Um, so I'm pretty sure the CMEI table um, will be right next to the TSAC table. At least we were going to try to make it sure like that. So I'll be um, tabling at CMEI, but um, we'll be right next to each other. So I'll be there as well. I'll be glad to help. School starts next week. I, I have class on Thursday evening. Perfect. Well, we would love to have you there, Ree. Wouldn't, couldn't think of a better person to be there. All right, so um, good. Now there's two people. I'll be there as well, and I'm sure many of us will be there in different capacities with our other um, um, responsibilities around the campus. So looking forward to that. Next is business cards. So basically, I'm requesting that each of us get business cards for TSAC. And so I put in the chat last night, basically what I've come up with. It's the outline. I have everyone's name, email, our TSAC uh, website. And so I just kind of put it in the chat there if everyone is willing to make sure their pronouns or if they don't want pronouns or if their last name spelled right and their email spelled right. Because once I submit that to the printer, those are what's going to be on the business cards. So um, it looks like it's in the TSAC 2223 chat only. I have a uh, it's called TSAC counselor business cards docs. And um, so please go in there and make your edits or say, yeah, this is good. If and on Monday or the beginning of next week, I will submit those um, to CMEI so we can have official MSU Denver TSAC business cards. Stephanie. Oh, a question in chat. How much will that end up costing? Well, I will let you know. I haven't heard anything about cost yet. Um, so that that is yet to be determined. I basically asked her about business cards. She's the lady who orders for TSAC and she's going to be letting me know all that on Monday. And so before it's going to cost us anything, um, if anything, I will bring that up and let you know on that, Stephanie. But as of now, I haven't heard anything about cost, just the information to come to her so she could order us our stuff. So, yeah. Okay, good question. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, but once again, there is that shared document in the TSAC chat with basically the, the outline of things. So if you'd like and have the time, put your information in there so we can get those properly um, done up so that we have business cards to share with the students. Yes. And then the final, second to final thing in the new business or the final thing in the new business is the TSAC podcast met radio. So um, basically, I think it would be a good idea that we take an hour a week for TSAC to create a podcast or a radio program. Um, they are going to have somebody covering us anyway, just to make sure we're on, you know, doing what we say we're going to do. But I think this, if we have a, a um, an hour to just, you know, have our platform there that we can either answer questions, we can come up with any format we wanted to do the show, whether it be, um, highlighting other student orgs or to doing um, doing like a town hall sessions question question and answer type thing um, basically things we're working on there's a lot of things we can do we have an hour or more i mean the school university is actually trying to get a 24-hour cycle for their radio for the radio so essentially um for now i say we start with an hour um a week and then go from there um, but there's a lot of things we can do i think it'd be good if we have two or three counselors that are willing to do this show or one, I guess, but you know, the more the merrier and on a consistent basis, you know, because 
you know, if you, if you listen to a radio show and you like the, you know, you're the podcast host and all of a sudden they're not there, you know, it's a little bit, you know, it's, you know, it's something you look forward to is the people you're hearing on there. So the only concerns I have is that we just need to have a consistent hour full of stuff, because if you ever listen to the radio, you never hear, you never hear silence. So we got to have, we got to have things being going on at all times. Um, but I think it'd be a really, really good idea um, for TSAC to have that space there. So I'd like to open this time up for different um, ideas on that. And I saw Alan's hand up first, but um, basically just to start it off, we need ideas for content to fill the hour topics. So anybody's thoughts or ideas, go ahead, Alan. Thanks. I, uh, I saw them on the uh, work study list and I emailed them and I already had volunteered to uh, do a work study there for a podcast, having really no idea what I would do, but I would love to do this, um, whether I do another one or not, I'd like to do this um, for an hour. I think it would be fun. And uh, I think it would be a great way to reach out to students. Uh, I think eventually, if, you know, if a radio show can get popular and we can go out and reach out to clubs and different departments and things like that, it'll bring up voting participation in the uh, for the student body and things like that. It's just a good thing as long as, uh, you know, we keep it nice and professional and everything else. I'd, I'd love to do it. Thank you, Alan. Uh, Paul. Thank you, Dan. Um, what I had in mind personally was a few things like I figured for one, we could use the, you know, once we have some airwaves, we could use it to propagate our. Um, the ways we can help students, so specifically like, you know, oh, there's going to be a financial aid event this weekend or there's going to be a scholarship event. Or maybe we talk about how you can come to our office hours and get help in those particular uh, ways, say we advertise the food pantry on here, say we lend our airspace to student organizations that would like to advertise or maybe make use of it even. Um, say we have student organizations of artists, musicians or the like that would like to play music, you know, or have their music heard on on, on the radio. We could we could, um, you know, give them uh, a portion of our program to have that done. I really like what you talked about, wherein we could field questions. Um, and have like a, that town hall sort of thing. Part of me thinks, hey, will we have enough engagement to have like a live version of that? I don't know. But I do think that if we were to just field these questions all the time and then answer them at a particular period, um, we, we could go through and, you know, select some really good questions to answer. Um, we could come up with some good programming in that way. Like just this could be um, one cultural arm of our um, work to in expand student engagement with student government. Um, and bolster our relationship with Met Media, you know. So that's what those are my thoughts on it so far. Thank you, Paul. James, go ahead. Uh, kind of like what everyone's saying with like reaching out. I think it'd be kind of cool if we had like uh, faculty come on the show, like teachers talk about like their experiences, um, maybe even try to get students to join like certain programs, certain clubs. Um, just for like teachers to even get like their own voice out so that way we can get them more connected with the students and then vice versa with the students. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you for that, uh, James. So I guess what Met Media is waiting for now is I talked to the director. So the man um, who runs it, Alfonso, or I can't remember his name, Alfred something, um, but he put me in connection with the student leader, the one who runs the radio station. And so that guy's name is Xavier or Matthew Perry um goes by xavier and so he's waiting for uh, kind of us to get some ideas out there so basically everything i just heard from y'all we'll, we'll put in a little show we'll, we'll, we'll go over and just put our ideas in there and uh go from there and see see what we can do and keep the conversation going but at the end of the day they, they are looking for as are we looking for a way to collect they're looking for a way to collaborate with the student government to bolster the student voices and so instead of them potentially and us working against each other we can work together i think it would be a great idea so i appreciate everyone's input and we'll get an email drafted sent over to the met radio okay uh old business so let's just touch up on a few updates i don't think naomi's here and i know she has an update so uh, um but first and foremost before that let's do this update on the school supply drive paul do you have an update yeah i do have an update um, and so we did meet with the president of CCD that's um, as as well as uh, the president of CU Denver, um, but specifically with CCD, we we have um, a lot of they've they've vocalized a lot of support for our school supplies drive. Um, and I know that Naomi has spoken with um, what is essentially the equivalent of CMEI 
in, at uh, the University of Colorado Denver and has um, secured an, essentially a, a verbal agreement for them to join us in this event. Now, I we spoke with um, Juan, the president of their student government over there, and they're not actually meeting until August 19th to convene and pursue any business. And um, we've been talking about having the school supplies drive on August 16th. And so um, you mentioned not being able to officially pursue um, this is a separate piece of CU Denver business, um, but I've, I'm working with them and I'm trying to push them into saying, how can we still have CU be a part of this? Um, even if it's, even if we're holding this event prior to um, them holding an official session, because we, we have a lot of support from their version of CMEI. Um, we, they just need more details ironed out. Um, but yeah, that's that's the update I have on the school supplies drive so far. Um, we're just continuing to we we formed a Teams channel for the tri institutional efforts that we're trying to pursue. If anyone's interested in joining that, I can get you in, get you in on it. Just shoot me a direct message. Um, but other than that, yeah, we're planning a social so that we can all get together and um, you know introduce ourselves to one another and really get the planning for this underway. Again, we want to see if we can have this, you know off the road here really quickly and ready to go um, by August 16th so that we can uh, meet this particular need before students have already, you know, gone out and purchased school supplies. Um, so, yeah, that's everything we have on the school supplies drive update, unless anyone else has something to say about it. Hearing none. All right. Thank you, Paul. So I don't think Naomi's on quite yet, but I can just make her little um, update here. So basically Naomi's working on an indigenous working on figuring out a way to make an indigenous studies requirement um, or indigenous studies class, a three credit class, a requirement for graduation here at MSU Denver, something similar to like psychology 101, how it's a requirement for everybody. So she is in the process of figuring out a way to propose that and has been talking with different professors and different things. And just this week has got a whole new list of things to take into consideration and 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 kind of the chain of command that it's going to have to go through. So um, the process is still ongoing and I'm sure she's willing to have anybody help her that is willing to. So you should just DM her. I know that's what she would say. And so overall, um, as things happen, she will, I'm sure, update us. But that is something that she's taking the lead on. And so that that was what her update was going to be. So hopefully next week she's here. She can fill us in on exactly what's going on. So that's that update. And C under old business is the Colorado Youth Elections Advisory Council follow up discussion. So I don't know if everyone was here, but we had Elena from the Colorado Youth Elections Advisory Council um, present to us the other week about writing a letter to our legislature in support of their initiative that they're proposing to get election days like a, a class is suspended for election days in higher education. So she had sent a letter or an email following up saying we haven't heard from you, hoping everything's OK. Are we still interested in supporting that? So I guess the question is, is there anyone willing to draft that letter? Paul, I know you have mentioned that. So uh, is there anyone else that wants to draft draft the letter? There is a template that see you. Oh, Mike, Mike. OK, hold on, Mike. Okay. There is a letter. There is a template that C CSU Fort Collins wrote. And they basically gave to us and said, we want a letter that looks just like this, but from MSU Denver. So it would be advantageous for us probably to follow as closely as we can to that because we do support that in whatever way. But go ahead, Paul. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say in reading the template they provided, it's really it's a really good letter. Um, I have a draft written that is just the template filled out. So um, I personally think we should send that but I also want to give some people the time to review it. I, I have it saved on my computer, so I'll have to upload it to um, the Teams or the SharePoint so we can all access it. But um, yeah, it's a good letter, and we should continue um, uh, what we had talked about on that meeting when she came in. And so let's lend our support to this effort. It's a really good way to empower democracy here in our state. I like that. Okay, so then let's just try to set this on the table for next week. So basically, um, get that up into the team SharePoint so everyone can read it and give their approval, and then we'll submit that letter to her by next by uh, I guess yeah after that meeting on Friday. So the following Monday we can get that to her so that we can basically follow through with what we said we were going to help her with, um, and that Colorado Youth Elections Advisory Council 
Um, so yeah, thank you on that. Basically, that is our agenda, folks. Thanks for joining us. Um, public comment is next, item number five. So five minutes per speaker. If there's public comment here, please request sign up in the chat. Say I'm here to do public comment and give you a second to do that. Looks like this computer is wanting to restart. Um, so is there any public comment that anybody that wants to make public comment, put your name in the chat now. Right, I'm not hearing anybody, not seeing anybody. Hopefully soon at some point we have some public comment. And at this point, uh, go ahead, Alan, see what you got. Well, I was regarding this public comment. Um, this is what's important about us having our meetings be linked to the public so that we're actually asking for public comment. There's nobody, there's no way there for them to get in here and, and see it. So hopefully the uh, the um, technology committee, whatnot, you know, hopefully get that so that this meeting can be linked to from anywhere without an MSU log on and we can actually get some public comment here. I'm looking forward that, to that. Yeah. That well, I think what we can do too to go off of that and to go off what you're saying, Re, is if we just put the link that's in our uh like what Stephanie had last year in the social media was the link to the meeting in the Instagram bio or a post on the Instagram that I was able to just log right into regardless of anything. I think it has to be through MSU Denver teams because that's what we're doing it on. But I do agree that um, we should make this link as possible available as possible. I guess for right now, for some reason, I've maybe I've maybe made it a little bit of hindrance and since it's in since it was organized by me. So let me see if I can fix that. But um, I do agree that we should have this on an Instagram bio. So I believe it does, Stephanie says. Okay. And Ari, go ahead. Oh, okay. Stephanie. Sorry, Stephanie. Yep. Thanks. Um, yeah, we can totally do that. Um, I just haven't had any communication from the social media committee to kind of go through um, all of the different passwords and stuff. So maybe we can set up a meeting here soon so then we can kind of update the link tree um, and then the Instagram stuff so then we can make sure that this is being accessible. I know that when Re sometimes logs in to the uh, meetings, um, it says that you're using like a Skype account or something. So I believe that other people or other formats of logging in can be used. You just have to accept them because I know that's sometimes what I do whenever Re logs in. So I think that it'll be okay. We'll figure it out, but let's go ahead and set up a meeting here soon so then we can update that information, y'all. Okay, that sounds good. Re, go ahead. Well, I log in on Teams, but it's a little convoluted for me because I use Teams at work. So I'm balancing two different accounts for SharePoint for all of this, you know, and then Microsoft 360. But I am definitely on Teams. I don't have Skype. Um, but I would, my question is really, um, I, to Alan's point about making it available to everybody and just adding a link. I mean, this is for the students. So I'm of the mind, we put it on the website and you access it through the MSU website where we have the student government, you know, and then, you know, you have to log in that way. I mean, it's not for the general public, right? Well, I think it could be. It could be for the general public, just like the budget recommendation committee meetings and all of that. Everything is for the public since this is a public institution, I, I think. But I would agree that it needs to be on the website, and that's why we're kind of waiting on getting everything locked, looped in with Senna and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, so Stephanie says, I mean, the website is also absolutely to the general public as well or available to the public as well so yeah i would say website would be good we can get the link on there but then again we're still waiting on meeting with senna and getting that wordpress stuff set up so that we can get the website locked in in the right way for that um getting the, our meeting there alan yes i'm all for it being absolutely available to the uh, general public at least if not the live meeting which it should be at least a link so that we could share it and if uh, we want to share a meeting with somebody in the general public, they can access it without having an MSU link. And just because it's public and we should be transparent, I mean, as transparent as possible, I'm in support of that. Awesome. Awesome. Looks like we're in support. All right. Sounds good. Since I saw no members of the uh, going second on the public comment, um, I move to adjourn the meeting unless anybody's opposed. All right. Hearing none. Thank you, everybody. Have, have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys next week. You guys need anything? We're in teams.